Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday. We got to talk briefly about the Aurora um, last night. It was really something. This is the west side of Denver. I took this photo. It was probably 8 p.m., maybe 8.30, somewhere right in there. I mean, it was just incredible to see this. Um, I saw photos from Texas, um, Alabama, and Florida. That's how far south you could see just a little bit of the color. I mean, it wasn't wasn't really all that visible to the naked eye, but if you held up your phone, you could definitely, you could definitely see it. I saw some green colors um, a little further north at some of the latitudes, and you might still be able to see some of that color again tonight. Yeah, last night was like a G4 type of event. It might be G3, G4, somewhere in that zone um, tonight. So if you have clear skies tonight, you might want to take a look at that. Um, all right, <clears throat> I want to show you the radar because we're just now starting to see very light Vanguard precip come in ahead of our big area of low pressure that's sitting out here. We still have high pressure across a lot of the Intermountain West, but it's a pretty dirty high now. We're getting a lot of overrun with cloud cover, but eventually that gets dislodged and this big area of low pressure moves and actually it's going to split into two areas of low pressure. I want to show you the uh, water vapor satellite imagery. I mean, you can definitely tell it's a dirty high. Look at all of the cloud cover streaming in. This is all moisture. This is water vapor in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So where you see the whites, the blues, that's going to be your moisture. The drier air is in the red, the oranges, and the blacks. But you can see the rotation. There's our area of low pressure dip in the jet stream. So that's what's going to move in. And it'll actually split into two different pieces. And we'll talk about that. Uh, in this forecast. Here are my bullet points. Here's what I'm seeing. So we've got the West Coast Storm System. That moves in in earnest tomorrow and hits California, the High Sierra, Oregon, and Washington. Then it will split and the southern piece of it may stall and spin until about the 16th, 17th and it makes its move, 15, 16, 17, and then it moves into Utah moves into Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona. Um, so that's an interesting forecast. And you can see it represented right here in these best odds of snow dates. So for example, in Colorado, heavy 16, 17, 18, heavy accumulations, and then moderate accumulations, 21, 22, 23, with a second storm system. Now in Tahoe, the whole storm comes in 13 into early 14 with heavy snow accumulations from Shasta to Tahoe all the way down to Mammoth. Now on the 16-17, on the you've got another piece that comes in with heavy accumulations and then another storm, 1920. So that's how you read it. In Utah, very, very light snow accumulation on the 14th. That's almost a non-event now. It's, each day it has uh, degraded. Um, and now the real impetus, the real thrust of it is 16, 17, 18, because the low will stall and then eventually move in after that. And then you've got another storm, 2021 20, and 22. So looking at the forecast radar, here's how everything's going to play out. We'll start this out at lunchtime today. So you can just see the beginning of the storm system there in California and up in the Pacific Northwest. Otherwise, you've got this big area of high pressure that will eventually get dislodged and move away. All right, so there's your dinner hour. There's 5 a.m. on Thursday. There's the lunch hour on Thursday. You can clearly see the push of moisture. Heavy returns over the Sierra and up here in the parts of... Uh, the Cascades. <clears throat> All right, there's the dinner hour. Um, here's the early morning. This is probably 5 a.m. on Friday. You can clearly see you've got an area of low pressure up here, and you've got an area of low pressure down here. So the split is on. But this one is really going to take its time as it moves in. There's the lunch hour on Friday. There's the dinner hour. And there's our area of low pressure down here, slowly moving. Little wave right there, kind of moving through the interior, but the other low pressure is up here. And then what happens towards the end of the period? So this is lunchtime. No, this is the early morning hours on Saturday. The low is still down here. There's another area of low pressure up here. But again, this is slowly moving in. And it will move in in earnest 
late 15, 16, 17, and probably uh, into the 18th. All right, looking at the forecast pressures, the pressure anomalies up in the middle of the atmosphere. So this is effective on Friday the 14th. So our area of low pressure is getting moved out. Here's our uh, lower pressure to the south. There's the one to the north. So those are the two that you really need to track. And then look what happens. By the time we get into Monday the 17th, you've got an area of low pressure here. That's the one that's crossing the Rockies. And then another one already sliding in behind it. The jet stream is set up perfectly to escort them both in. And a departing area in the northeast with snow and cold and wind up there. All right, let's go out to the, the 19th. So on the 19th, look what happens. Two days after what I just showed you, that second area is now the primary low, and that's moving through the interior. So we get a nice push of snow, 16, 17, and then another low immediately after it for 18, 19, and also 20. Um, looking at forecast total precip, well, actually, you know what, let's look at IVT, Integrated Vapor Transport, Central California Coast. There's the storm that finally moves in on the 13th. That's the one that will then eventually slide in um, to the interior Rockies. Here's a five-day total precipitation as if everything fell as rain. So a little quiet at first, then here comes our storm on the 13th that hits California, and then it moves slowly into the interior. That southern track low goes in this direction. The other low goes up in this direction. Heavy amounts of precip as if everything fell as rain. I mean, we're looking at potentially two to six inches of moisture up and down a lot of the west coast. So that's significant snow at higher elevations. And here you go. Here's your 10 to 1. Five-day snow forecast. So again, very quiet at first. Then we get the snow in the Sierra. The low moves in, tracks in this direction, hits Utah, Hits a lot of Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. The northern low goes up here and hits the rest of Idaho, Montana, and also interior BC and Alberta. As far as my official snow forecast, this is a grand total by the 18th. Um, all the numbers have gone up as a result of that because now we're looking out longer and that southern track low comes in. And look at the numbers in the Sierra. So you're still looking at one to two feet there. No change. But look at the numbers over Utah. 10 to 20 inches. That low on 1617 is, is pretty hefty. And then re remember, there may be another low that comes in late 1819, somewhere right there. Look at Brian Head and Snowball, both at 16 I've got. Um, across the western slope, 6 to 12 inches. Less as you move towards Summit County and the Front Range High Peaks, only 3 to 6 there. Looking at 4 to 8 northern New Mexico. Uh, 8 to 10 up here, Bridger, Big Sky, Grand Targhee, and Jackson Hole. Uh, 8 to 12 through a lot of uh, Idaho. 6 to 12 up here in northwest Montana. Still decent numbers, 6 to 10 up here in a lot of Oregon and Washington. And some good numbers up there through interior BC. But the snow levels up there will be challenging through a lot of that event with probably... 6 to maybe 12 inches through a lot of that interior BC, a bit more of our Marmot Basin, especially if you're higher up, you'll potentially see more than that. So looking at the northeast, still some snow, one wave there, another one comes in behind it, and anywhere you see those deep purples, that's over 6 inches, the bright purple, bright pink, is potentially a foot, and there are a couple of areas that could get close to that, still a little bit of lake effect, as well, kind of curling into those those uh, favored areas. So as far as my official forecast goes, again, grand totals through the 18th. So 10 to 12 up here, Mad River, Sugarbush, Stowe, and Jay Peak. Everybody else is going to be less than that. Mount Washington's at 9. Uh, twos and threes, Sunday River, uh, Sugarloaf USA, Treblance at 6. 8 to 9 up here through Lake Effect, Lake Placid, and also Snow Ridge. Look at some of the plumes, the longer range numbers. Remember, these are ensembles, so these are a bunch of different model runs. Um, you're looking at the ensemble means here. 14 over Mount Washington by November 27th. The error bars are up around 2 feet, so that would be the extreme case. Um, looking at JP, doing real well, about uh, 13 inches on the ensemble mean by November 27th. But again, look at these error bars up around 18 to 20 inches. Uh, for the extreme case. Jackson, Wyoming, you've got 16 on this uh, ensemble mean by the 27th, but potentially the, the, uh, the air bars are up around two feet. 
So Jackson's looking good. Once we get through this tough period, which is pretty dry with high pressure through the 14th, then the numbers start going up. And it's a similar situation. If you look at Berthoud Pass in Colorado, you've got a foot coming on the ensemble mean by the 27th, but it is just high and dry through about the 15th, 16th with that area of high pressure, just waiting. Everything kind of splits around it. Then eventually the numbers begin to accelerate up. Last stop is Denver, Colorado at 52.80. It's again a very high dry period here through the 16th, 17th. But eventually some chances, the first chance of snow is, is on the board here. Somewhere around 19, 20, 21 or beyond for the Denver metro area. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.